G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and it's a beautiful sunny morning here in South East Queensland, winter time, here in a t-shirt, I mean you can't get better than this, the birds are chirping and I'm out here planting a fruit tree, but I thought, you know what, I want to show you guys what's going on this morning because it's just so awesome and before we get into that, what's also awesome are you guys. For those new subscribers lately, I think off the back of that uh, how to grow a ton of ginger video and the mint video as well before that look I really appreciate you subscribing to the channel it means a lot to me it's fantastic the way that I've been getting so much support lately and all those comments and questions and I've just been really enjoying being a youtuber at the moment so let's go and have a bit of a look around and see what's growing in winter at my place. Now the dogs have just gone off. It's the neighbour's dogs again. You know I've talked about that before. What can you do? I'm not editing this video. Well I'm going to edit it but very limitedly if that's a word. So here's this row of fruit trees. I, I did a video a few, uh, a few videos back on growing a new row of fruit trees here in this particular position and uh, they're going well I just put another one in it's just citruses citrus trees a tangerine Let's see how that goes I'm yet to put some mulch around it I just wanted to cover this video and get into the day but uh, I really want to check out the patch first and show you guys what's going on out the back here I want to cover the patch actually only, mainly. I'm going to go through every bed and uh, let you know what's going on. Now, this front bed here, you'd remember if you watch all my videos, you remember that I covered this one. I took the cover off the long bed behind these. You can't see it from here. And I've put it on this one. We'll get to that other bed in a minute, but you can see that. Well, you might be able to, but if you're going close, you can see that the grass underneath it is starting to die off. And that's what I'd expect it to look like underneath this whole thing. I'm going to keep this on all winter, and then we'll grow something else in this bed when I take that off, refurbish the bed. Uh, that's also got a whole lot of manure in there. Oh look about 12 months ago. I did a video on um, Mulching this bed putting manure in green manure at the time then mulching it with a whole heap of wood chips um, I'll put that video up above but uh, So I won't probably need to put much fertilizer or manure in this I just needed to kill off all those weeds that grew up and that's why I put this tarp down and that should kill them all off nicely Springtime, I'll open that up, probably give it a bit of a till, and we should be able to grow some great veggies in here. So this bed is resting at the moment, except for in this corner here, I had this self-seeded eggplant. Absolutely beautiful. Look at this. Look at this eggplant flower. And we've got an eggplant growing here. This self-seeded, and I just, you know, I just don't like getting rid of self-seeding good plants like this and it's growing lovely. Eggplant don't grow too well through our winter so I'm surprised that it's looking so fantastic. Um, and that's what I mean about keeping self-seeding plants because they tend to adapt to your climate and uh, whereas in the past I haven't been able to grow eggplants too well through winter I've got a few self-seeded varieties now, or whatever variety it is, it looks like the, the larger eggplant. Um, and you know, they're, they're adapting nicely, so obviously I'm getting fruit now through winter, whereas I never used to be able to. And that's the key to, you know, backyard gardening, leaving things go to seed. Remember this bed? I did a video not so long ago about knocking down all the weeds in this bed. Oh, the bed was covered in weeds but they hadn't gone to flower yet. And so I used them as a green manure. 
and I tell you what it's done great wonders so I knocked it all back mulched it in kept all the green stuff underneath and only what several weeks later I planted in some brachias artichokes brew kales let's have a bit of a closer look cabbages these are a sugar loaf cabbage they're starting to form nicely we've got some wham box a little bit eaten here by the odd caterpillar I don't worry too much about that they'll form nicely zucchinis look at that flower they look pretty healthy you can get a little bit of through winter when you grow zucchinis in our climate you can get a little bit of um, fungus on the leaves a little bit of die back but I don't tend to worry about it at the moment they're growing really nicely this is a self seeding bok choy that I threw in here you can see it's going to seed again actually there's a nice little native bee probably from one of our hives down the back sitting there having a bit of a feed on the pollen and just in this corner here got a few herbs the garlic chives this is the time winter when we get herbs like coriander and the dill come up we've got sage we can't grow these herbs through summer here it just gets too hot but yeah several things in there move on quickly I better get around so that the video doesn't go for too long this bed here I'm in the process of refurbing you can see all this loose stuff here that's actually off cuts from our turmeric that has died back now it's starting to die back it's in that final stage into winter it'll die back and I tell you what I'm going to do a video on how to grow a ton of turmeric I reckon that'll go off like a rocket but anyway it's quite interesting because you know it you can use the leaves as mulch in the garden so it's almost self-perpetuating it will die back on itself um, use itself as a green manure and then keep regenerating but of course you don't let it regenerate um, by just staying in the ground you dig it back up and I'll get into that another time but uh, needless to say it's been a very successful crop and because it was flopping over everywhere um, I've dug it back I've cut off my, m most of the leaves that had died off and I've sprinkled them around the garden to use as a mulch here's another eggplant and here's another one as well this is a longer variety but yeah later out there I'll put some extra mulch on top of that some sugarcane mulch and we'll let that rest on the side here we've got some galangal and this is interesting see how they're galangal it's a similar root crop to turmeric or ginger but it's no signs of dying back just yet green as growing terrific so it handles obviously handles the cooler weather better than these other crops um, so we'll see how that goes wonderful smell wish you could smell through the camera but this turmeric here smells fantastic look at it there we go there's something here I'll take that inside oh look how rich and orange that root is mm. put that there for now mm. this bed here I'm refurbishing, I haven't finished mulching yet. I've got a bit of work to do here in the patch. I'm keeping this cabbage from last season, hoping that that goes to seed so I can collect the seed. That was a mammoth rock purple cabbage. Here's a Japanese radish. You can eat them this big, no worries. Uh, what do 
they called? Um, Diacon or something? I, I can't recall just at the moment. Japanese radish. Um, but I'm going to let that go to seed and get a whole lot of seeds out of it so that we can grow more of it. In this bed here we've got getting to some of our raised beds now the colour bond or galvanised steel ones just got some lettuce growing in here and some spinach this had some Jerusalem artichoke growing and a few other things and I've just refurbished the bed I got these seedlings from the local nursery I don't I, I, I'm not obsessed with having to grow everything by seed. Uh, my theory behind it is that, like this tomato plant here, for example, I have collected the seeds from in the past, and uh, for this, in particular, this yellow one, and uh, this is a, a yellow pear type variety, fairly common, grows very well in our climate, especially coming into spring. It'll shoot up. It'll shoot up and grow really well. Uh, but, you know, I don't mind buying the odd seedling from a nursery because it gives you a head start on the garden um, and it's easier to grow from seedling. But also, you know, you, you, you can't be too jack. Um, if you think that, you know, you can grow, you can buy things from each other, like seedlings from the local nursery or seedlings from the markets, plants from the markets you're helping out the local economy and that's the way I look at it I just don't even though I grow a lot of my stuff self-sufficiently through my own seed and leave things go to seed and all that and I talk about that a lot I still do buy things from the local economy uh, to put in my garden even if I can say hypothetically grow them myself or collect the seed because I just think it's a good thing to do and you buy lots of different plants and things that you, you, you don't usually grow things that aren't in season like this tarragon and uh, yeah I've put that in this bed what I've done in this bed here we skipped these two for now but I had uh, perennial capsicums and I've cut them right back you can see how much I've murdered them and then I've mulched the bed over and in here I've whacked a whole heap of manure. This is well rotted manure that has been sitting down the back for a good 12 months. You can hear the cockatoos in the background, can't you? They're yelling out, squawking out. Up in the trees there. And uh, so I've refurbished that bed and I've planted in a few herbs, some tarragon, a little bit of coriander. Mm. Mm. The cockatoos. Probably eyeballing our vegetable garden. I can't get a good shot at any, I don't think. The sun's right in the background. So, uh, oh, there's one right on a right on the edge there. Let's see if we can zoom in and have a look at him. Oh, he's gone. Bugger. If we go back to this bed, I had a whole bunch of Jerusalem artichoke. And I've just taken the tops of the plants off, cut them all back, put them in the compost, and I've left the roots in the ground for now because I'm not ready to use them. If you dig up all your Jerusalem artichoke in one go, what'll happen is they'll all go soft and yucky, unless you pickle them. Um, pickle them or puree them or, fr or freeze them or whatever. If you leave them whole, the tubers will just go, they go soft within a matter of days. So I dig up and, and use as, as needed, and I leave them in the ground. If you leave them in the ground, the tubers stay hard. So I leave them in the ground buried until we need them. So that's what this bed is. Most over, heaps of Jerusalem artichoke root in there. So we might as well just finish this bed off where I was talking about these pear tomatoes, these yellow pears. We've got several 
tomatoes in here. Some of them have self-seeded in the garden from other places. And you can see that I've cut back these chili plants. These are cayenne chilies, the mild ones. And I've cut them right back again severely, just like the perennial capsicums I was talking about. And they will shoot back in spring. Uh, so they're just sort of overwintering at the moment. And these are just self-seeded tomatoes. I don't know what variety they are, but I'm hoping they, they'll come up. I think they'll be some type of cherry tomato, but they'll all come up and grow up these cages and then flop down. And uh, I'll show you what I mean with some more mature tomatoes that I planted you know, a month or so ago. Got some thyme here, a little bit more sage, just growing in this herb pot. Had that for years. I mean, you know, it's, it's good to use these small pots as, as herb containers, um, the mini raised beds. In this raised bed here, I've got a bunch of strawberries around the outside and they're gonna flop down um, hopefully anyway as they grow. So all around the outside I've planted strawberries. I've got a couple of tomatoes in the middle here and with the tomatoes and it's the same as this bed over here I've interplanted self well seed that I've saved from purple beans and what they do is they grow with the tomato plant and they wrap themselves around the tomato plants right how cool is that and uh, they they act as a twine and they hold on to the trellis and so they like they, they're self-tying tomato plants or self-tying beans to the tomato plants if you know what I mean uh, in the center here I've got some lettuces cos a mixture of cos and and uh, other varieties this uh, soft hearting variety but yeah, look at this bean. So bean and tomato combined. Really good. And you'll see a better example of it over here. You've got still heaps of mint growing, as you can see. In this other pot here, I've got oregano that's taking over. Uh, some sorrel in the middle. That's very nice. Thai basil. Had that for years now. Just keep cutting it right back and then it keeps coming back. The bees love it and of course it's fantastic in cooking. And in this bed here, we've got a self-seeding tomato. I don't know what variety it is. I suspect it's a yellow variety. And there's an eggplant in the middle here as well. That's self-seeded. And I've got a bunch of beans that I threw in here that are trying to keep them all together. Also, sweet potato. There's a whole range of things in this bed that's I've sort of left concoct itself over the years. And this bed here, I refurbished it. I don't know if you remember watching that noise you can hear in the background is a plover going off, another bird. It sounded like a car alarm. Um, yeah, yeah, if you remember my growing sweet potato, grow sweet potato like a boss video, I had this big sweet potato on the, as the thumb. And you remember how I, inter I, I planted the sweet potato roots and everything like that underneath here and then on top I planted tomatoes and, and, other, and other things. Well that's this bed and you can see how well it's all doing so I'll just give you a bit of a look and see how it's going. You've got this kale going fantastic on the end here. Basil in between the kale and tomato plants. So if you're looking closely here, you'll see the sweet potato starting to come up. Now, the sweet potato will slowly grow and slowly grow. And when all these die off in the next couple of months, three months time when they're finished, they all die back. The sweet potato will then take over the bed. So that's that double crop thing. Um, you can see a bit of blight taking over some of the tomatoes. That's not unusual for winter time in the subtropics. Here's the trade-off. I can grow tomatoes well in the subtropics in winter, but you'll get some of those leaf diseases and that more easily. Um, 
than you would in the spring. But if I grow my larger tomatoes in spring, the fruit fly here and they decimate the tomatoes by laying maggots in them. So this is the black Russian. You can see growing quite well. Some beautiful big tomatoes. They won't get fruit fly damaged. Here's some cherry tomatoes. They're a different variety. They're a, a tom I call them a tomato berry. They're quite nice actually. Um, but yeah, you do get that winter blight. And uh, but I, I'll sometimes just break off some of the affected leaves. But um, I tend not to worry too much about tomato diseases. You know, not these type of leaf diseases and that. I mean, viruses and that that can really knock off your tomatoes. Of course, you've got to be concerned about them and isolate them, pull them out, put them in the put them in the rubbish or something. But I very rarely see any viral diseases here on my tomatoes. It's mainly just leaf diseases, which is quite natural. As the tomato grows, it does get these small fungus diseases and target spot and that type of thing. But they're growing very well. And like I was talking about before, if you look closely. You can see that there's beans, beans growing up through here and the beans are holding on. I've got twine as well in places to hold up the tomatoes to the trellis. But the beans, I'll probably see better on the other side, the beans are intertwined with the tomatoes. Oh, here we go. Here's a couple, I need to pick these, that's getting a bit large. They're intertwined with the tomatoes all the way up here and they're keeping them attached to the trellis acting as a twine itself. They've also planted um, Asian salad greens. They don't mind a little bit of shade. So I've got Asian salad greens planted in between the tomatoes. You can see how it beefs out the bed and it does two things. It grows food for us. You can see here grows food for us but it also blocks out any of the weeds so as the tomato plants grow up and there's gaps underneath there if you fill it with other things like lettuce and the <laughs> cockatoos are back if you fill it with things like lettuce and Asian greens and you plant underneath the tomatoes well then it can block out those weeds and also give extra food and you can pump more into that garden bed. Let's have a look at the other side. So here's some more black Russian tomatoes. Have a look at this one. That's called cat face. And the reason why that is, has happened is mainly because of the coolness. When tomato plants are growing, even though I'm in the subtropics here, it is winter time and the temperatures can get down to zero uh, through the night. So, and, and you know, stay at around 11 degrees Celsius through the day. So what happens is when, when the pollination happens, let's say a bee comes and pollinates a flower, um, I believe this is how it happens, that because of the cold the pollination doesn't 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 pollinate correctly, and uh, you get these deformities through the pollination process because it's too cold to pollinate, and that's called cat face, and that's what it comes from. Um, the other side here, I've got this supposed to be a mini roma. Does that look like a mini roma to you? I mean, that looks like a pretty big sized tomato to me. That doesn't look mini. I'd expect a mini Roma to maybe look like that. But uh, anyway, yeah, growing well. And uh, here's a good example of the bean. So you can see the bean is going up the trellis, going up here, and now it's holding on to this tomato plant that's wanting to reach over and fall over. But the bean plant is curled up all the way and is holding on to this tomato plant. It's beautiful. And you've got the minute you got the beans forming here. So the beans intertwined with the tomatoes. I reckon that's cool. Alright. 
let's uh, keep moving on. So this is the bed that I had that big tarp over that I moved over to the front. I've refurbished it now. I've put down a whole bunch of manure that I had from the pile down here that I had resting for 12 months. And I've placed it in there and then I've covered it over with a whole heap of mulch. In spring, maybe mid-spring, I'm going to plant that out all with corn. Maybe several different varieties, but I'm just going to block plant it with as much corn as possible and see if we can get a huge corn crop going with that, through that whole bed. And moving on to the last bit. This used to be uh, my old potato bed. I did a video on growing potatoes in wood chip and that's what this bed was, was about. Uh, I've got rid of the potatoes now and just mulched in. There might be some seed potatoes still underneath there. They might come up through that mulch. We'll see how it goes. They won't come up through at the moment. They'll come up in spring, if anything, the, the, the potatoes. But uh, I've, I've got some self-seeding bok choy that I've left go to seed again and uh, because I keep replanting this stuff. The, the native bees love it. Can you hear them? The bees and the native bees just love it. So I leave it go to seed and we'll collect the seed and use it in the garden or we'll just transplant the seedlings when they come up. Here's some carrots. They've self seeded as well from last season and we'll probably eat them or leave them go to seed as well but we've been eating a few carrots already so I've left them in that side of the bed so that's why I didn't I refurbished the bed but I didn't get rid of those those plants there likewise in this middle bed I'm conducting a bit of an experiment with cardboard well, here's a sweet potato I just pulled out I got that out of this bed but I've laid out some cardboard uh, that video I did on the cat run uh, how to build a cat run for our little Russian blue. I had a whole heap of cardboard packing material left over from that and I thought well you know I'll use it in the garden because I've seen cardboard well I've used cardboard before but I saw it recently down south um, at Harper's Mansion when we went and did a bit of a visit and then the the gardener was using cardboard in their Garden of Eden food garden just to lay down and block the weeds out and then mulch on top. I haven't mulched on top yet, but I intend to mulch on top. And then that cardboard will rot down, and it, so it does two things. It rots down, it's recycling type uh, sustainability sort of stuff, but it also suppresses the weeds and stops any weeds and that growing through. And, and it should protect the bed underneath, let the worms and microbes breed up so that when I do get to planting this the bed should be nice and beautiful. I left this radish go to seed here in the middle mainly because there was a couple of beautiful little frogs living in here. Uh, I can't know, I don't know if I can see them at the moment but there are several frogs living in there and also I want it to go to seed and we'll collect the seed. So it was growing really well right in the middle and I just left it in there. Finally, here's the bed that I did the, how to grow a ton of ginger on. You can see that it's just leveled out nicely after I've remulched it. And on the other side is the asparagus. See how the asparagus is dying off now completely almost. Once that dies right back, and they, because I don't want to cut it back now, even if it's still a little bit of green, but nearly dead, I want those asparagus root crowns to get as much energy as possible. And that's what it's doing now. It's growing, it's putting energy into the roots. And then when it all dies off, I'll cut that back, remulch it itself, remulch that onto itself, and then give it a feed give it some fertilizer, give it some mulch, and then in spring, that asparagus will come back strong as ever. So that's the plan for that. 
right at the back here I've got my compost heaps which I'm going to do a video on I've just been uh, waiting and I've got these bananas as well here that I've yet to do a video on and I've got to cover those bananas because they're getting to a good size now where they're probably a month or two away from ripening and uh, I don't want the bats and insects to start just targeting them now before they're ready to harvest. So I'll cover them with a plastic, a proper banana cover. There's another bunch on the other side and uh, I'll be doing a video on, on banana growing as well in the future. So I know that was fairly long winded uh, and uh, uh, me um and ahhing all the way through the garden but I like doing these videos. I know they're not as exciting as say my how to grow a tunnel of videos which are you know edited and um, are faster and give points more succinctly but these sort of everyday videos are, are, are for you guys that want to get really involved see what's going on in the garden at a more intricate level so I hope you enjoyed that video if you did give it a thumbs up don't forget my website selfsufficientme.com Thanks again for all the subscribers and all the new subscribers and thanks again for that group of subscribers, you guys, who continually show your support no matter what video I put up uh, and no matter how terrible my editing is or how my uh, ums and ahs are, you still give me a go and uh, I really appreciate it. Like I said at the beginning, I'm really enjoying my YouTube video creation and my writing as well but I've just been thoroughly enjoying your company at least once or twice a week and just creating this type of content it's fun and I enjoy interacting with you guys so thanks a lot bye for now